Okay, this one's on the oil pot burner. Now, these things are kind of dinosaurs. You don't see them much anymore because the efficiency of the burn was not so good. But they're a very simple sort of heater, usually a freestanding heater that was used in residences and small build and small businesses. But they use number one fuel oil because it's a little more volatile. And they, uh, they didn't have any pressure. In fact, they could be operated with uh, no power at all. And some of them had fans, but uh, they could run without the fan. And I just kind of wanted to give you a, an idea on how they worked. Hopefully you'll never see one, but whatever. I actually did work on a fair number of these silly things. Uh, the pot burner, kind of give you a walk through. This is the the burn chamber here and this is the heat exchanger and there's a vent pipe going out. This is a carburetor and it's got a float in it and the level in the carburetor for safety concerns is not very high. This is probably a little higher than it would actually be so that uh, the float kept a level so that it didn't put too much fuel oil in here. If it got a lot of fuel oil in here, boy, these things would take off like a rocket. Uh, more on that later. Uh, there's a small valve here that will allow fuel oil in. So if you turn this thing on, and usually it's just a question of pushing something down or something on this carburetor to get it to start to flow, it will flow oil in here, and then the incoming oil from the tank will come in and fill it back up again. But it'll run very small level in the bottom of this heater. Now, you have to light this heater with a uh, match. Well, probably more than a match, but there's usually some sort of access hatch or something like that, a little hinge on the side. And you can open that up and you look inside and you'll see this plate here, which is a round plate with a hole in the center, probably about that big around. Uh, and you can take, and you probably really shouldn't do it this way, this is how I always ended up doing it, but take a little piece of paper and light it and drop it in the bottom. And what oil was down there would start to light. Now these holes, there's holes all along this, or there's slots or something, and that provides combustion air. Now when this stuff lights off, and it's actually using whatever you put in there as kind of a wick, once it starts burning, it starts vaporizing the oil. Part of it starts burning down here and keeps it warm there. But as it comes up through this hole here, there's all these secondary air slots or holes or whatever it is. And they provide air to finish the burn. And so the burn actually ends up being complete up here. And your fire, it'll actually reach higher than this. It usually comes up somewhere in here. And as the, the oil level drops from it burning, more of it comes in from the carburetor. Now, these were oftentimes set up with heat-operated fans so that when it came on, this fan would come on. But they also had an idle system because the way this is, it's on or it's off. I mean, you actually got to let it shut it off and let the fire burn out uh, before you can stop it from making heat. So they, they actually came up with an idle system on these things. And in the carburetor, it was set up so that when uh, you didn't want heat, and you could do this manually, or you could put a thermostat with these things. When you didn't want heat, it would go to low fire, which meant there was a small orifice in here in addition to the larger orifice. And this small orifice would put in enough oil so that this thing was still burned, but it would burn very low. Okay, when you called for heat, either manually you could go back and push something back there, or if it had a little solenoid on it that a thermostat could change, then it would go to high fire and it would run through the main orifice. 
and it would start going up. You know, I'd love to have one of these things to, to uh, explain it to you. And if I ever get one, I'll do a video on it. But, you know, they're kind of few and far between anymore and haven't seen any for years. Um, but they would, uh, they would actually go down to that idle and then they would increase the flame. They're also usually with some kind of knob on the top here. There was something. And you could turn it to a higher fire, meaning when it went off of the idle and went to main fire, it would put in more oil so it would put out more heat. Okay, the obvious disadvantage to these things is it's running that pilot light all the time. Now, pilot light in this thing is actually pretty big. You know, it's probably putting out, I don't know, eight or 10,000 BTUs. So it's using quite a bit of heat uh, just to keep that pilot going. And there's also a nice nifty little problem with these things. It was so fun. When you fired one of these things up, you turned it on, and you threw something in there that was lit, and it didn't light. Okay. Now, because this level is fairly low, it's not going to fill this thing full of oil, thank God. Uh, but it will put too much oil in here. And then you find out a half hour or an hour later, it's like, oh gosh, it didn't come on. So you go in there and throw another one in. Uh, those things will literally start jumping around the room. I've seen it happen. Uh, used to have them when I was in the military. And uh, we had a couple of them that didn't light off, and yeah, somebody would come by later and try to light it off, and it had a pretty high level of oil in here. And uh, they're really dangerous at that point. You're really in trouble. So, like I said, this, the level in this carburetor won't let it get real high in there, but it'll get high enough to cause, you could cause a fire. Uh, if... <laughs> If you're lucky, all you get is some soot in the house. If you're unlucky, the place burns down. Anyway, that's what was used. They, they, were, they had a value in that there was no power necessary to make these things actually work. Uh, but of course, they were far more efficient if they had a fan. And they could have a thermostat in the wall if they had power to operate the thermostat. So these are just a, it's a simple burner. It was, the efficiency wasn't all that high. These things did kind of put out a lot of soot, uh, especially if they weren't maintained really good. You got to be really careful of these things and maintain them. Make sure all these holes are open and everything. Um, and once a year, you got to get in there and backing the whole thing out. I hope this is understandable. The old pot burner, they disappeared right after they didn't disappear but they they got much less after world war ii and we'd established these uh, uh pressure burners a lot of the pressure burners came in in the late 40s and early 50s uh, when we hit uh the 70s uh, oil shortage these things were gone there was just no way you could uh you can justify using one of these things because they use way too much oil and the oil is getting expensive. Anyway, that's the old pot burner for what it's worth.